Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so happy to have with me here directors, writers, and producers of the Panola Project, Rachel DeCruz and Jeremy Levine. How are you today? Doing good. Thank, uh, thanks yeah. for having us on. We're really excited to chat with you. Oh, it, I'm excited to talk about this. This is such a cool, sweet, and really unique look at what America sort of looks like now, especially post-COVID. Can you talk a little bit about how difficult it was to shoot this thing, and especially in a small town like Panola, Alabama? Um. You know, I think everything in life right now is really difficult because of because of COVID and its relentlessness. Um, but you know, actually making this film was was one of the more joyful experiences I think in in the past uh, slog of the last two years here. I mean, we we really started it because we were we were tired of just being depressed about the state of the world, and we're like, there's got it like there there's still good goodness out there. There are people doing good work. And uh, yeah, we heard about this woman, Dorothy, who's the, the star of the film, um, how, how she was running this vaccination campaign uh, all by herself out of the convenience store she, she runs in this small town called Panola. And, and yeah, we showed up and um, I mean, from that point forward, it was, you know, making a film is hard, but, but as, with that in mind, I would say things just went kind of remarkably well. And so much of that is due to the fact that Dorothy is just such a delight, such a dream to work with. And as you see in the film, she's also, she's kind and she's like relentless too, right? So she gets everyone to take the shot, to, to, to sign up, to get the vaccine. Uh, and so she kind of brought that same energy to making the film. And, and so was like kind of a co-producer in a lot of ways and made our lives pretty, pretty easy in a lot of ways. I can totally see that. She, I like to use the word star because that's what she is. She is the star of this movie. She is mm -hmm. the center of it. And she seems like such a sweet woman. And she reminds me of like a grandmother figure or a mother figure that's just taken this whole town under her wing and is trying to save them from all dying of COVID. Mm -hmm. Totally. I think, yeah. I, I think that that's so wonderful. Now, what was the what was the decision to to make something like this? What made you guys think this is what we need to do? This is the story we need to tell. Yeah. So, like Jeremy said, we were sort of in the midst of depression, right? It's like COVID has been super challenging. We were living in Alabama at the time, um, and you know, it felt like hope was on the horizon, right? We had just come out with the vaccine. People were starting to be able to get vaccinated. But what we were seeing across the state of Alabama is that not as many people were actually going to get vaccinated as, as one would hope, right? And so I think we were really looking for a story that could bring some joy, some hope, and some just kind of a bright spot on the horizon for folks, given how challenging everything felt. And, you know, it's literally as soon as we met Dorothy, we were like, oh, this is going to be like, she's, she's perfect. This is amazing. All you have to do is watch the film. And like, I feel like as soon as you hear her voice, you kind of know, you're like, okay, I'm here for this woman. So, um, you know, I think it was, it just felt like the right film to put out in this moment um, when we're all kind of struggling and grappling with what does it mean to be living amidst a pandemic? How do we come together to support each other? And in particular, I think we were really interested in being able to tell a story about a rural community and how they were grappling with COVID and a rural Black community too, right? Because a lot of times when we hear people talk about rural communities in the mainstream media, we're talking about rural white communities. And so it was important to us to be able to bring that perspective into the film. I think that that is a wonderful thing. And I think that that's a story that doesn't get told enough. And you're right, a rural black community is not talked about enough. It's, a, it's usually, when we're, when we're telling that tale, um, it's usually in, in an urban setting or in, you know, in a metropolitan city or something like that. And I, I like the way that you guys told this. I, I have to tell you, I didn't know what to expect because it's a documentary and it's a short. And I'm like, you can't tell that interesting of a story in that much time, but you did. You managed to squeeze it all within 15 minutes. It's really nicely done. And I wanted to talk to you guys about maybe some things that uh, you guys find as influences. Who influences you to make film? Mm, that is, that's a great question. Um, wow, where do we start? I think, um, you know, my, my I, I'm super interested in kind of where documentary and fiction kind of meet. And, you know, I, I basic, I've made documentaries um, my, my whole career, but I would say there's kind of a trajectory where things are always kind of, each film's like a little bit more structured like a narrative film. Um, and so, um, yeah, there's, there's, 
you know, films like The Act of Killing, I think are, are super interesting where there's, you know, the use of recreations. I mean, Errol Morris does, does super interesting work in that vein. Um, I love the film The Arbor where, where actors are lip syncing documentary interviews. Um, I, I think American Animals is, is just like a stupendous film, right? Like anywhere where we're able to, to kind of play with fact and fiction and, and, and really to bring the joy of storytelling, right? Like storytelling is not, it's not inherent to the fiction genre. Like storytelling goes back to us sitting around a campfire telling, right? Like we've been doing this since, since like the dawn of language as humans. And so, uh, you know, the more that we're able to kind of bring strong narrative stories that grip us and pull us along um, on, on a journey, right? That's, that's how we, uh, you know, learn about other people and we learn about other issues in a way that isn't like being lectured at, but is, is a visceral emotional experience. I like that. What about you, Rachel? So I actually, this is the first film I've ever made. Um, I'm less of a film buff than Jeremy, I would say. But, you know, I think I, when, when we approached this project, the, the storytelling aspect was really important to me. And I'm really inspired by the organizing work that's happening around the country right now. And in particular, like the Black women leaders from the South, like the Stacey Abrams, who are just kind of similar to Dorothy, right? Just doing everything they can, everything in their power to make sure that their community's voices are heard and are brought to decision-making tables. Stacey Abrams, good pull, love her. Um, well done, I like that. Now, your, your film is very serious and it does a very serious topic and it's a very important topic and I'm glad you guys discussed it. But I'm going to ask you a really fun question. It'll also be the hardest question that I ask you this entire interview. So you, you'll have some time to think about it. Now, let's suppose, and I want an answer from each of you. Let's suppose you can only watch two movies for the rest of your life. What two are you picking? Because you may not be a cinema buff, but we're all movie fans. That, that is hard. So we live, we continue to live for a while, but we, we only, we got to rewatch two movies this entire time. You can't watch any other movies. The length of time you live is completely up to you. Okay, <laughs> got it, got it. Uh, boy, oh boy. Or, I'm, or, I'm or gonna nature, take- Or nature, or nature, either one. <laughs> um, it, I feel like the name of it's on the tip of my tongue and I'm embarrassed I can't remember the name of it because it's one of my favorite films. <laughs> What's it about? I'm very good at this. It's a Wes. It's a Wes Anderson film. Came out a while ago. I was probably in like middle or high school at the time. The Royal Tenenbaums. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so I think I would choose the Royal Tenenbaums. I I loved that movie so much. I I've watched it so many times. Um, I obviously forgot the name, but the kind of story has stuck with me. And there was just something so delightful about the characters and the worlds that Wes Anderson builds. And then I think I'm going to choose, and this might not be a pop popular choice, but I'm going to choose uh, a rom-com, a Christmas rom-com, yes. because <laughs> every year I like to watch Love Actually, and it's just something that brings me a lot of joy around the holiday season. <laughs> that is such a great answer, Rachel. Let me tell you, I am known as an expert in the romantic comedy. <laughs> Love Actually is a great one, and I actually chose two... My two movies are actually both, both romantic films as well, but uh, as soon as we get Jeremy's answer, we'll talk about that. Okay. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I want. Yeah. I want. I'm very excited to hear. I think for my my documentary, um, Honeyland, I just think is is just wildly remarkable. I mean, it's. I, I I also teach and I show clips from this film, and every time I show a clip, I'm just like so blown away by the cinematography, the like warmth, the characters, the the storytelling too. Right. It's just like it's just phenomenal. It's, it's a uh, gripping documentary. I, I agree with you. It's really good. Great choice. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, God almighty. Um, maybe I'm, I'm just going to pick from recent. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, okay. Here, here's what I'm going to do. I, I loved one of the films that made me want to become a filmmaker and is wildly different, I think, than anything I do uh, is, is Waking Life by Linklater. Um, just like blew me away. I had no idea cinema could do these things. Um, and, and yeah, that would be, that, that'll be my second choice. I, I just love the, the whole aspect of rotoscoping. I think it's such a cool way to tell a story. I think that's a great pick. I am a huge Linklater fan. Seen all his movies. I love it. Great pick. He's just so good at telling stories. Me, I would take Eternal Sunshine of the Spot of Mind mm. and, and The Apartment. Those are the two I would pick. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Eternal yeah. Sunshine was another like pivotal moment for me for sure. 
yeah, it's why I do this. It's literally why that movie is why I do this and why I get to talk to awesome filmmakers like yourselves. Let me close this out by asking you guys if if any if people had to listen to a pitch from you guys as to why they should watch your movie, what would you say to them? I, I would say this is a film about a pandemic, and yes, it's a film that's also about like the underinvestment in in rural communities and rural black communities and the ways that we as a country have, have failed these areas. And that sounds like kind of a bummer, um, but like, this is a fun, right? Like we were very deliberate. We've had enough <laughs> doom and gloom. Like this is a fun movie. Dorothy is larger than life. She's incredible. She's like, it's overused, but she like really is a hero. Uh, and uh, it, I, I don't know, I had so much fun making it. We had so much fun making it. There's dancing. You gotta right, like you gotta you gotta love that. We've got some really awesome music too. Uh, Jermaine Mainframe Fletcher was our composer. He did a great job, uh, kind of building off of. We, we were using Marvin Gaye's Trouble Man as our uh, inspiration for the the musical soundtrack, and I think he did a, a really tremendous job. So if you want to like you know figure out how do we move forward in a pandemic and have a good time doing it, then then check out the Panola Project. I would say that this film, given the massive amount of depressing films I've seen in Sundance already, <laughs> this massive amount is such an, a, ray of, a, a positive ray of light, honestly. It's so awesome. Dorothy's amazing. That scene where the nurse is like, the, the nurse says that, uh, he's like, it, I'll only get it if you hold me. And she said, she says, so I held him. And then he, he said, well, if you're going to hold me like that, I'll take three more. I'm like, that is amazing. <laughs> yes. I didn't want that. Yeah, I, st I mean, we've watched the film hundreds of times at this point. I still literally like burst out laughing out loud each time it happens. It just feels like um, I'm so grateful that we like had the camera there in that moment and that we were filming. Yeah, that laughter is just so contagious. So, And, it, and if people want to reach you and to talk about your film on social medias, where would they do that, guys? We Hashtag Panola Project. We will keep an eye on that and we will get back to people. Uh, you, you can also, we could give our own handles too. Uh, I'm at, yes. at Jeremy S. Levine. And I'm at Hey Reggie. What was that, Rachel? <laughs> at Hey Reggie. Hey Reggie. <laughs> A conversation for another time. <laughs> I I can't I would I, I would love to know that that story yeah <laughs> that is awesome guys thank you guys so much for joining me if you guys get the chance to check out the Panola Project you guys definitely should it's such a ray of light in this dark and ridiculous time that we live in right now make sure you wear your mask make sure you get your vaccine I don't care if anybody likes what I have to say about that do it save lives there there Dorothy's not out there for nothing get get it done guys thank you guys so much for having me I appreciate you. Thank you. This was great. Yeah, thanks.